All right, so today we speak, oh, I'll take it to this extent, I do it sometimes. We're gonna talk the love language of trig, radians, okay? So sometimes we're not always gonna have things that are in degrees. Sometimes they may have to be in radians instead. So up here at the top, we're gonna chat for a second about how we find the area of a circle. So we're gonna rewind it to geo here for a little bit. How do I find the area of a circle? Do anybody, anybody remember what the formula is? Ooh, I heard it. Oh, somebody's gonna be quiet on me now. Okay, area is gonna be pi r squared. So, since we're gonna leave the answers in terms of pi, which is gonna kinda lead us into radians, because radians are actually use pi as part of their part of their solution. All we're gonna do here is to get my area, I just do pi times my radius squared. And again, squared just means I multiply that number by itself. So three times three would be nine pi square centimeters. Because again, area is a two-dimensional analysis. And we're just gonna leave it that way. I know you don't normally go up to somebody and say, hey, what's the area of that circle? Ooh, nine pi square centimeters. They'd kind of look at you strange. But again, it'll kind of make a connection here in a minute. So normally, as we'd go through and find these areas, you're actually starting to get a preview to a conversion that we're gonna be making. Except we're gonna be doing it from degrees to radians and not this way. But I do have one question on this last one as we finish up our warm up portion. What happens when you square a square root? So if I do square root of five and I square it, just get that value back that was underneath. And I just noticed something. I guess nobody was, nobody's like, that's not a big deal. I had it in inches and I wrote it in centimeters. That was kind of strange. But otherwise it just kind of lets us see where this value comes into play. Now, when we start talking about radians with the pi value, though, it's a little bit different. So we have a couple of vocab terms that we need to kind of help us throughout this section. And one of them is going to be what's called the central angle. And it's an angle where the vertex is at the center or the middle of my circle. So it's sort of like if you took a pi and you cut a piece in there, Okay, the very tip of your pi here, that angle would create what's called our central angle. What's also included when we cut that angle out or look at that piece of the pi is something we call the intercepted arc. Now, wish I'd have done this on pi day. I could have made even more funny comparisons, but the intercepted arc is kind of like the crust of my pi. It's this area of the circle that gets cut off by that angle, and I can find the length of that. We're gonna have a formula for that here in just a minute. But here's the thing that kinda comes into play with this thing called the central angle. The measurement for this, we don't use degrees as much when we get into these. We use something called a radian, which it says here's the measure of a central angle that intercepts the arc with the length equal to the radius of a circle. Okay. So basically, here's what we're gonna use here. Here's how we're gonna apply this. When we wanna go from degrees to radians or radians to degrees, we have this little mini formula. And the thing that I've gotta keep in mind is that pi, not 3.14 in this case, but it's gonna equal 180 degrees. Okay, that's a thing I need to be able to make my conversion. So when I'm trying to go from radians to degrees or degrees to radians, that's why I'm multiplying by this 180 over pi or pi over 180. Because if they're equivalent, 180 divided by 180 is one. I'm not changing the value, I'm just changing the way that it looks a little bit. So here's how this goes. Okay, what's the radian measure of each angle? What I'll typically do, okay, so it's in degrees, I wanna go to radians. So I'm gonna times 
by pi over 180. So I multiply straight across. If I want to put the 60 over 1, I can, if that makes a little more sense to me. And I have this 60 pi over 180. But I always want to reduce things like this. So here's how I'm going to do that. I do not want to use the pi in my reducing. I'm going to treat it kind of like I would a variable. So when I go to reduce, I'm just going to do the 60 divided by 180 in a math enter enter because I don't want decimals here. So 1 third pi or 1 pi over 3 or just pi over 3 even would be fine. Okay, any of those are equivalent to each other and can get me to my solution. And no matter what angle measure I'm given, if it's in degrees, I'm always going to do times pi over 180. And again, some of you will get to be like, oh, so basically I'm just doing this divided by this, and I'm punching it in my calculator and seeing what I get out. And that is true. So negative 135 divided by 180. Add that or enter. So I'd have negative 3 pi over 4. And so on. So it's, it, this is actually, out of all the concepts we've done, probably one of the easier ones that it actually is to calculate. And then I just work that all the way through. And just keep reminding myself that I'm going to treat the pi like I would a variable term. I'm not going to use, and I can get some funky looking answers and get myself situated with that. So not, not too bad of a deal. 31. What's that? Fire the question at me one more time because I'm not catching what you're asking. Yes. We are still going to be multiplying when we get to number two because now I'm in radians and I want to go back to degrees. So I'm still going to multiply, but that fraction I was using before, I'm now going to do it to 180 over pi, and here's why. If I want to get to degrees, I want the pi, I want the radian part to go away. And it will with this because I have a like term that's there that I can cross cancel. And then I just do what's left. 180 divided by 6, which is 30. And I've got degrees. And that's going to be true on every one of these that I do. So I get to this one. I cross off the pies, multiply with what's left. 4 times 180 is 720. Divided by 3 is 240 degrees. And so if I do that, and that's how I always remember. People are like, well, how do you know if it's 180 over pi or pi over 180? Well, if there's already pi there, I want to get rid of it. Okay? And if I put pi in the denominator on a degree one, that wouldn't make much sense. So 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So not a bad deal. Now, I also, when we get into this, because before we had that circle and we looked at all the degrees that were in there, what we're going to do is we go to the back. Again, this is our unit circle. But now the degrees have been replaced by their radian equivalents. So like instead of 90 degrees, we have pi over 2. Or instead of 60 degrees, we have pi over 3. But otherwise, everything's the same. So what I want to remind you of here, as I find a better marker, is that we need to remember when I'm looking at these values, it's always cosine and then sine. So when we saw this before, we basically went around the circle and said, okay, so these are all my cosine values. Okay. 
and then all the values that would normally be in what we'd call our y would be the signs. So if I am asked to evaluate or find a value for any of those, I'm just going to go into my circle and I'm going to work my way around and find it. So if I want the sine of 3 pi over 4, find my 3 pi over 4, and my sine is the square root of 2 over 2. And we'll leave it in that radical form. I don't have to put it into a decimal. That's the answer. Okay. So I find my angle measure first, and then once I find it, I look at the coordinate that's there with it, and if it's asking me for sine, I just take the second value, and if it would have asked me for cosine, I would just take the first one. So it's basically kind of a, a search mission that we're on with all of these. So when, no matter which trig function I'm looking for, I always look for the angle measure first, and once I find that in my unit circle, Cosine is just the first value that I find there, which is the square root of 3 over 2. And so for any of these, okay, 11 pi over 6, I find that over here. Sine is just the second value that's listed. And we're ready to roll. So not, not, not a bad deal. And then really, for our purposes, the only thing left that goes with that yes, would be one little equation. Because you remember when we were back on the front, we talked about this intercepted arc, this, you know, the crust of the pie that we were dealing with. Well, now we can actually find the value of that based on this. So, the length of the arc, they use S, not quite sure why we use S, is the radius times the measure of the central angle. Okay, it's something called theta. It's just a way you could use X or anything else you wanted to. Theta, T-H-E-T-A. It's a Greek letter. A lot of the mathematics that was done back in the day was done by like a lot of Greek type people, so they used their Greek letters instead, like Pythagoras and some of the things like that. So, so here, okay, my radius is four, and then the measure of my central angle is 3 pi over 4. And I can just make fractions out of everything if I want to. I multiply across. And again, I just reduce the numeric part of the fraction. I leave the pi alone. Okay, and it's not area, so I don't want to put square inches. I just want to put inches. Now, I, I want to make note of one thing before we jump into the actual work that could go along with this. So I'm going to flip back over to the front for just a second here. Okay. When we're doing these, I know sometimes in the book it's going to say, put a decimal answer to two places. Put a, eh. We don't normally do that with these. So here, we're going to do no decimals except for the application problems, which are at the very end. Okay, so in this first part, when it says go to a decimal, just leave it in pi, okay, just leave it in radians, and we can go ahead and we can work that that way. And again, tomorrow we're going to try a quiz preview out, and we're going to work on some more of these too. This is a little bit shorter of an assignment, so in case you had some questions from yesterday or that day before on some things, I could help out with that. Um, but otherwise, we'll have that quiz ready to go on Friday, and... It'll let us just get a little done next week before we're 